Hi homeschool friends, I'm Miss Mindy and today is the first day of an artist study. The artist we're studying, his name is Henry Matisse and he's called the master of color. He lived during the turn of the century from the 19th to the 20th century being in 1869 and he died in 1954. He was born in northern France which is shown in this map by the red star and we're across the Atlantic Ocean in the blue star in North America and he was in the continent of Europe. Henry Matisse had Henry Matisse is most remembered for two different styles of artwork. The first shown on the left was through painting and the one on the right is shown through cut pieces of colored paper. As I give you a bit of background on Henry Matisse, I want you to be thinking about this verse from the Bible, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I want you to be thinking about this idea as I tell you his story. This book I got from the library tells a story of Henry Matisse, who, who they call the colorful dreamer. Matisse was born in a dreary village in France, an industrial town. They had a lot of factories and smoking chimneys. But Henry dreamed in color. His parents were worried about him because he did not do very well in school. He did not do very well in his violin lessons. The only thing he seemed to be good at was dreaming. Matisse dreamed of a colorful and exciting life, being a clown or an acrobat in a traveling show. He did not dream of doing anything normal. Yet he finally agreed to go to Paris, to go to school, to be a law clerk, to be a lawyer. It was at the time that Matisse was working as a law clerk that he found himself in the hospital with appendicitis. For months, he was in a hospital bed and couldn't go anywhere as he was recovering from surgery. The man next to him had a paint set, which intrigued him. So Matisse finally wrote to his mother and asked if he could have a paint set as well. And then everything changed. Even when he went back to work, he found himself um, coloring and writing on everything. He had a family and his hands found the violin again and this time he found that he was excelling. His world was full of color. People started to recognize Matisse's style and color and things that he was doing. And as he, But as he got older he found himself back in a hospital, this time with cancer. He couldn't reach the same paint sets that he could in creating all these big um, costumes and decorating chapels. So instead, he used colorful paper and cut them up into shapes. He even had to wear sunglasses to help shield his eyes from all of the extra color. He called this painting with scissors. These are some of the styles that he did in the second part of his life after his second hospital visit. And by then, the whole world had noticed Henry Matisse. We can use Henry Matisse's story to remember how God brings us out of bad situations that we might have to go through, but he uses them for good if we allow him. Through his time in the hospital, both when he had appendicitis and then later in his life when he had cancer, he allowed God to use his circumstances for good, discovering the best art and developing some of the, um, the best things in his lifetime. This is the craft that we're going to do today. We're going to be making a Henry Matisse style painting. We're going to be using um, items like crayons, watercolor paper, paints, and brush in order to create these very vibrant, bold, um, daring colors in a uh, painting. Okay, if at any point I'm going too fast, you can just pause the video until you're at the point. Um, we're going to be making that flower scene, and so we're going to start off by drawing a vase about halfway through the paper. And you're going to draw a vase. We're going to start it in pencil, and then we're going to go over it in permanent marker. So this can actually be done pretty light. We're going to start with the vase, and then about in the middle, we're going to draw one flower going up. So there's the stem and then the actual flower on top. These are all gonna be slightly different and we're not really looking for things to be perfect. Yours should look different from everybody else's. 
Next we're going to do a flower going off to the right. And this one, we're kind of starting an oval, because this one's going to be open. And leaves. Anything that you don't like, we can erase after. And then we're going to go do a flower off to the left. This one's going to go this way. And same thing, this is going to be a big open flower. And again, yours can look different with leaves. And the next thing is we're going to do a table around it. This is going to be a circle, starting on one side of the vase and going all the way around, but not going through it, because we're pretending the vase is on top of the table. Yeah. Next, we're going to do the table legs. Start on this side, go all the way down. And then here, going all the way down. Now we have the flowers, a vase, and the table. Next, we're going to be drawing the wall. I like to draw a dot about there. Um, halfway on the table this way, but also close to this side. You're going to draw a dot, and then we're going to make lines from that dot to the table, but you're going to stop at the table. This is where the floor meets the ceiling. And then we're going to start at that dot again and go all the way up. This is the corner of the room, the wall. And then go back to that same dot and go this way. You can see in my picture there's also room for the room to continue, so I'm going to draw the line that way. Once you're done with the pencil part, then you're ready to go over it in permanent marker. Everything Henry Matisse did was very bold and unapologetic. So you really don't, you can't really make a mistake. You just kind of be confident of the lines that you're making. It's not about perfection. Once you get to that point, if you have um, any pencil lines that are sticking out, you could kind of take a second to just erase them if you want to. And I have a very bold drawing that I went over with the permanent marker. And the next step is going to be the crayons. Now with the crayons, I'm going to use some very bold lines. On this wall, I think I want to do stripes. And I'm pushing the crayon down really hard because this is the stuff that's going to show through the... Um, paint. I'm going to go on the around my flowers like this. This design I'm going to do stripes, but I'm going to change it for other parts of my drawing. The wax and the crayon won't mix with the water in the watercolor paints. So you're going to kind of see some of this design after you cover the rest of your painting with the paint. Yeah, I think I'm going to do um, maybe a zigzag on my vase. And I'm pressing the crayon down pretty hard without breaking it in order to really get the most color. We want a lot of color, a lot of pattern. And they can be as different or as unique as you'd like. I'm going to do kind of a circle on the table. And I'm going to color the flowers too. Uh, I think I'm going to go with a green swirl on the floor. However you choose to do this is totally good. We're using very vibrant, very bold colors with our crayons. We're going to be doing the same with our paint. Let's see, for the bottom of the table, what color might I do more of? Maybe purple, and I'll do kind of like a, I don't know what this is called, like a wave. And let's see, I'm going to color 
my leaves. And maybe I'll do the flowers too. This is the lighter pink. My watercolor is going to go on top of this. And we use the permanent marker to cover over the pencil because if we didn't, our flowers would just disappear. We wouldn't be able to see those really strong, bold lines. Okay, I think I'm ready for paint now. Now with watercolors, the biggest, the biggest ingredient is the water. So I'm gonna use a cup of water and you get, get the paint nice and soaked. The more water you use, the lighter the color will be. It looks like I might've had a little bit of, um, of another color on this one too, so it'll be a surprise to me what color comes out. I like using a thick brush because it covers more space. The more I spread it out, the lighter the color. I'm gonna get more water again, my color. And each time you bring it to the paper, the color might be just a little bit different than it was before. And you can see color and the uh, wax from the crayon don't mix. So you're still gonna see some of that crayon underneath, especially if you're not using a really concentrated color. I like all the bold, bright colors. It really feels Henry Matisse-esque. I'm gonna kind of wash off my color a little bit. And having some blue, I think I'm gonna do the, the vase. This cut looks very concentrated. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off my color. And I think some of my colors might have got mixed, so maybe this is really the blue. I'm gonna put this one on the bottom of the table. You don't have to do them in this order. You can do your colors however you'd like. You can even mix watercolors if you want to, to create new colors. Each one of these drawings and paintings should look a little bit different, and that's kind of what makes it so special. That one turned out very thick. It's really kind of fun to see how they turn out. I'm gonna use green for the for my floor. The more water you use, the more the lighter it will be. You can see a bit of the crayon coloring coming through. That's what's so neat about the watercolor. I'm still gonna go over this green, even though I know I won't see too much of it, because I had the the flowers there. There. And there's my finished Henry Matisse painting. So thanks for joining me on this artist study of Henry Matisse. Join me next time when we'll do more art from the second part of his life when he was painting with scissors. Thanks.